Anthony Martial won't be here next season. Therefore, Manchester United are expected to move in for a center forward in the summer, someone who can act as support slash cover for Rasmus Hoyland. In this video, I am going to look at some data as well as some footage to introduce two potential center forward targets for Manchester United this summer who can act as Anthony Martial replacements. Without any further ado, let's analyze. Okay, let me start by explaining what's going on here. This is a scatter plot chart showing the best under 26 strikers in world football currently. So how did I determine that? Basically looking at all of the under 26 strikers in world football right now who have scored at least eight goals and who have a non-penalty goal minus expected goals of at least minus one. That means that all of the players right here are actually having a good season and all of them are showing great ability at scoring goals. Now, of course, not all of these players are suitable to be signed by Manchester United as Anthony Martial replacements. So, for example, there are certain players that we can easily remove from the equation. Take, for example, Jude Bellingham or Erling Haaland over here or uh, Kylian Mbappe. These players are just unattainable. It's just unrealistic to go for these players. Someone like Lotaro Martinez, for example, Inter Milan have shown that they are, a, they are willing to sell their best players for the right price. But it could only work if you're telling me that we're going to play him and Hoyland together as part of a front two, but of course we don't play a front two. So, of course, Lotaro Martinez also is uh, not a realistic target. Of course, here there are certain players that, even though they look good statistically, take, for example, a player like Jonas Wind, a player I'm familiar with, uh, but he's more like a Weghorst type of player, you know? So I think that the stats make him look good, but I don't think that he is technical enough to contribute to a team like Manchester United. And then, of course, you have players like Matthias Sule, who is actually an attacking midfielder slash winger. Same thing with Albert Goodmanson. These are players I'm going to be talking about in a future video, but not in this one. So in this video, on this chatter plot, basically what we have, how these players are organized, is according to key passes, which is an indication of how creative a player is. Of course, that's not really what you want from a center forward, but a center forward that can also craft out chances for his teammates is always a good thing to have in the team. Then, of course, non-penalty goals minus expected goals, again, showing how critical and how clinical these players are, how effective they are with the chances that they get. And then, of course, the size of each star. As you can see, for example, here, uh, Cole Palmer's star is way bigger than Erlen Haaland's star, which you can barely see. That's actually an indication of how many shot creating actions did they contribute this season. So basically, the bigger the star, the more creative through various mechanisms, for example, defensive actions, um, life passes, dead ball situations, take-ons, which is dribbles. So, of course, the bigger the star, the more creative the player is. The smaller the star, the less creative and less involved in play the player is. And, of course, the color is an indication of the average distance. So, the redder the color is, the bigger or the, 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 the bigger the distance the, the player takes whenever taking shots. And that's actually a pretty relevant uh, metric. So, out of these players right here, by working by elimination and just by observing how these players are organized, I think that there are two main players that just speak to me from this chart. And these players are the following. The first one is Dominic Solanke right here, okay? Who plays for Bournemouth. He scored 12 goals this season. What's also interesting about Dominic Solanke is that even though his star is extremely small, so you might say, okay, Mr. Scarlett Report, this guy does not really contribute much to build up uh, play. What I'm gonna say is this, is that when you look at those shot creating actions, and you organize them. For example, if you look at um, shot creating actions after defensive actions, defensive contributions, you realize that Solanke is actually number three with three defensive actions, three shots that were created from defensive actions. That means three shots that were created after a tackle or an interception. What this tells me about Solanke is that he's actually quite good at pressing um, uh, aggressively from the front. Okay, and that's very important because that's the way Manchester United under Eric Ten Hag want to play. But even under another manager, that's the way top teams want to play. So what this tells me is that Solanke is actually really suitable for that kind of football. And that's always good to have. The other player that really uh, caught my attention is, of course, Joshua Zerksy. This player, I really love him. I really love watching him play. Always puts a smile on my face technically gifted, and I'm going to show you that in the in, in the video footage later on. Eight goals for Bologna, two assists, which is not bad for a 22-year-old. Very, very good player. And what I like about him as well is that when you look at his shot-creating uh, actions, you realize that actually he's contributing mainly through... So this is uh, live passes, 
36 shots came from uh, life passes for center forward that's actually pretty good in fact the players were ahead of him you have the likes of Cole Palmer Kylian Mbappe and Jude Bellingham no shame in that and then when it comes to take ons he's also ranking pretty high at third so actually he's third when it comes to creating chances from dribbles what this tells me about Joshua Zerksi over here is that he's actually uh, quite a good technical player He's got good flair, good first touch, good vision, good dribbling ability, and that's really important, especially in this Manchester United team. So many times we've been watching Manchester United play and we are like, come on guys, what do these guys do in training? Because technically they've shown um, some really, really poor performances over the past few years. And I think having a center forward like Xerxy, who is technically at ease, and we're going to see more of that when we watch the video, that's definitely going to be a cool addition to the Manchester United squad. Now, enough with the data. Let's look at some actual footage. But before we do that, let's have a word from this video's sponsor. This video is brought to you by Stathead FBRF, powered by FBRF. Stathead FBRF is the most comprehensive, publicly available football database on the internet. It is a sort of a sports search engine, if you may. Let's say you and your friends would like to settle a debate on who is the most creative player in the history of the game. You might want to look at which player has the most 15 plus assist season seasons in the history of the game. The answer is very easy. Messi and Kevin De Bruyne with five each. How do I know that? Stathead FBRF. Or let's use it in more practical ways. Let's say I'm looking for a young prolific striker from my club. I might look at who are the current under 24 strikers around the world who has scored 15 plus goals in this season. And yes, that's just like playing football manager in real life. Stathead FBRF is currently in its beta version and it is free for a limited period of time. And upon signing up, none of your credit card information is required. Not only that, but Stathead FBRF also have a comprehensive playlist on YouTube that shows you all of the tips you need to learn how to navigate the platform. So yeah, I highly recommend Stathead FBRef. If you are a journalist, a data analyst, or you just want to unleash your inner Scarlet Report, make sure you click on the link provided in the description box and go and check it out. Okay, so now let's move on to our video analysis and we're going to start with Bournemouth's Dominic Solanke. And what I really like about this player, he's extremely underrated, but what I really like about him is just how much of a killer he is in and around the box. And of course, let's start with a goal that he scored this season against Manchester United. Now, in my tactical analysis of this game against Bournemouth, I, of course, highlighted the mistakes that we've made here from Bruno Fernandes, Scott McTominay and Amrabat, of course. But Solanke over here, this goal could not have been scored without his movement. Look at what he does. Like his movement, his ability to position himself between the center backs right here is excellent. He reads the situation and he anticipates much faster than everyone else. And then when he gets the ball, I mean, he's in this situation. This finish is extremely hard. Onana's positioning is very good and Maguire is closing the angle. So he's only got a very narrow angle and yet beautifully slotted into the goal. Now, another thing that I like about Solanke is not just only about his positioning, but also how fast he reacts to the situations around him. His reaction time is much faster than the people around him. For example, here against Newcastle, there was a rebound, and then the first player to, re uh, to react to that is, of course, Solanke, and then the composure to go and finish it and put it in the net. That's such an underrated skill that is disappearing, actually, in modern football. Another goal, another fox in the box kind of goal from Solanke over here. He is moving very well, again, in between the center backs, pushing the center back right there, but he always, he knows where the ball is going to come. And then when it comes, he positions himself in a way, holding off the uh, center back right here, and then beautiful cheeky back heel into the net. He's an extremely, extremely good player in the, uh, uh, in the, the penalty box, in the penalty area. Here's another example of how fast he reacts and how well he moves. Now here he's standing with Ogbonna, the West Ham defender, but Solanke is going to be at least one second faster than Ogbonna right here. And this just shows one of his key skills as a killer, as a poacher. So what he does here is that he's positioning himself on the shoulder of the last defender classic move but he's one of the best players in the league currently when it comes to this particular skill so he's positioning himself he knows where the ball is going and he's of course the the the, the fastest one to react to the ball Ogbonna was next to him could not read that situation and then Solanke is there he still has the composure to go around the keeper and then score the goal beautiful this game you know uh, Bournemouth beat Newcastle 2-0 
That was a beautiful performance from Bournemouth. Now, to those of you who think that this player is just useful inside the box, that's not true. He's actually also great in transitions. Manchester United like playing in transitions. Teams like Manchester City even. This season, we've seen them play in transitions. So it's very important to have a player, a center forward who can play in those kind of situations. And here, Solanke, same thing. Long ball into space for Solanke. He's got pace. He's got physicality. And then he's got technique and dribbling. Look at this. Get past and then beautiful finish. That means that he's also a player who can operate in tight spaces in the box, but also he's a player just like Marcus Rashford who can exploit those spaces in behind the defense. Great, great, great player. Now, of course, here we talked about the good, but of course we have to talk about the drawbacks of a deal for Solanke. Now, what I don't really like about this deal is that he's English and he plays for a Premier League team. That means that his price tag could be high. Could be higher than what we are prepared to pay for someone who's going to act as cover for Hoyland. You can expect somewhere around 35 to 40 million pounds, which in my opinion is a little bit too much for a player of Solanke's quality. But there are a few good things attached to this player. Okay, so the first thing is that he's Premier League proven. He scored 12 goals this season. He's on his way probably to score 15 to 20 goals, which would be amazing for a Bournemouth striker. The other thing that I like about Solanke is that he's been... Um, developed in the academy uh, of Chelsea, then he's been rejected by them. He went to Liverpool, Liverpool also rejected him, and then he rebuilt his career at Bournemouth, which tells me this is a man who has a point to prove. And wouldn't it be wonderful if Manchester United gave him that opportunity? That could be just the right mixture of talent and, you know, mental tenacity from this player. And it could turn out to be a very good cheeky transfer for Manchester United. So anyway, you guys tell me in the comment section whether Dominic Solanke could be a player that you'd be looking forward to see in a Manchester United shirt. Now let's talk about Joshua Zerksi. And this guy reminds me of so many players. Berbatov, Zlatan Ibrahimovic and Kaká. And it's amazing. Look at this. This was an assist against Inter Milan. By the way, here, Bologna beat Inter Milan 2-1. Both assists came from Joshua Zerksi. Now this is why it reminds me of Zlatan Ibrahimovic. Look at that a back-heeled volley for his teammate and then goal. Now, while this is an impressive uh, assist, the second one in this game is even more impressive. Remember, I showed you a lot of the short creating actions that he produces come from take-ons, from dribbles. Look at this, guys. Look at this beautiful play. This is against Inter Milan. <laughs> That's it. You are in the past. You're gone. And then he dribbles with the ball. Beautiful through ball to his teammate. That's Ngoy, I think. And then beautiful chipped finish over the goalkeeper Bologna beat Inter Milan 2-1 because of this man right here Joshua Zerksi beautiful performance from him L let me just say one thing about him before I move on here Zerksi has scored and assisted goals against AC Milan Inter Milan twice Lazio he is scoring and assisting he's producing in big games high state games so he's not a bully who just scores tap-ins against lower ranked teams no he actually scores really important goals or assists makes really important assists against really strong opponents. This tells me that now he's 22, when he's 24, 25, Xerxes is going to be a big game player. That means a player who produces great moments when it matters. And that's actually something that we lack at Manchester United right now, because our players tend to hide every time we are in a big game. In a high-stakes situation, they hide. So now look at this situation. Xerxes over here, great anticipation, great reading of the game. He's positioning himself, waiting for the defender to make a mistake. And, of course, that defender makes the mistake. Xerxes is there to pick it, pick it up. And then the composer again to go around the keeper. And then left foot, finish into the box. Another killer. Another player who's extremely effective in front of the, uh, the net. Now, look at this goal, for example. This is a through ball. This was against Torino. Another high state game for them. He controls the ball. And what I like about this is just how unfazed he is. He's just moving assuredly and he's not panicking at all many players would have just taken the shot here with their weaker left foot what he does instead is this beautiful takes out the defender opens up the angle and then just places the ball beyond the keeper and then now if you think that this was a one-off he did the exact same thing and even better against Inter Milan same classic move through ball in space and then he can hold off the defenders he can control the ball he gives himself some space and look at this again Turns on his right foot. Who is this? This is Jan Sommer. I love this goalkeeper. Huge respect for this goalkeeper. But he's going to be made to look like an under-17 goalkeeper by Zerxi. Look at this finish. He's just, he's just passing it. Passing it into the net. 
And look at Jan Sommer, he looks defeated. And that's great, great quality from Joshua Xerxes right here. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I know that these topics often get heated. I think people have their own preferences for who they want Manchester United to sign. Now, in this video, of course, Solanke and Xerxes are not the only option that I, options that I think we should go for, but they are definitely interesting players to look at. So let me know in the comment section, out of these two players, which one would you prefer and what other strikers would you be looking to bring or to see in a Manchester United shirt in the summer? Until next time, cheers.